For my time of devotion, I decided I'd like to share uh, some personal reflection, uh, even a testimony of sorts, if you will. And so I've written it out uh, just to help me get my thoughts out. So I hope you don't mind if I read it. There's a saying, uh, God will never give you more than what you can handle. And I've been told this a lot, as you probably have as well. I believe it to be based on scripture, although I'm not quite sure it is received in the way that it was intended. So 1 Corinthians 10, 13, no temptation has overtaken you, but such as is common to man. And God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able but with the temptation will provide the way of escape also so that you will be able to endure it. This phrase and scripture confused me for a long time. I suffered a great deal to finally comprehend them both, even just a little bit. When I was just shy of my 18th birthday, I was an adventurer ready to serve God. I moved as far away as I could imagine, which in reality was the state of Oregon. <laughs> Uh, I went with Mennonite Board of Missions, and this is where I served at the Boys and Girls Club Youth Program, and this is also where I met and married my husband, Steve. Steve, at the time, was already battling Hodgkin's lymphoma. Uh, it's a cancer with a 90% success rate. Uh, if you have to get cancer, this is the one you want, I was told. We carried on with our plans and our hopes and our dreams. Can you see where this is going? Two years into our marriage and many chemo treatments and hospital visits later, it became apparent that he was not getting better. We realized that Steve may fall into the 10% failure rate. Stats aren't always so wonderful if they don't benefit you. My wish was clear. I wanted God to take away his pain. I had fervently prayed for my husband's healing. And I truly felt I was living the life God wanted me to live. Surely God heard me. Surely he saw me. Steve passed away at 33 years of age. I was stunned. How could God not respond to my prayer? I felt lost. Why bother praying if God has his plan, I thought. I was angry. I was grief stricken. And I was confused. It was only a few weeks after my husband's death that the Columbine High School shooting took place. It was all over the TV in uh, the US. I'm sure it was all over the TV channels here as well. Back then, these kind of shootings were unheard of. I would have done anything to save the life of my husband. And meanwhile, someone was willingly taking innocent lives. What had life become? I began questioning if God was really in control. This might actually be more than I could handle. How could God do this? How could he give me more than I could handle? But the saying doesn't quite have it right. God promised we would not be tempted beyond what we could bear and to be there for us when temptation threatened to be too much. The temptation to give up on prayer, perhaps even to give up on him. In a moment of frustration, I banged my fists and yelled angrily at God, why didn't you heal him? I immediately heard and felt God's reply. I did. This took my breath away. I knew it was true. I was praying for my husband to be healed in a broken world. It was more than a reasonable desire, but certainly a mortal one. In that moment, I instantly felt God's grace. It's difficult to put it into words, but I knew unmistakably that that's what it was. In 2 Corinthians 12, uh, 9, it reads, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. As Christians, we will experience suffering However, God never allows us to experience pain or suffering unless he has a divine purpose for it. Sometimes we may not know what that is, but one day it will be revealed even before we have the chance to ask. Prayer does not mean that we will automatically escape pain or sorrow. The sorrow I have lived has taught me to pray differently. 
I now pray for God's will to be done in my life, for my eyes to be open to his will, for my heart to be content, and for my spirit to show graciousness. It's certainly not always easy and sometimes even forgotten, but it is the path I always try to return to. There's a song I enjoy uh, by Robin Mark called Days of Elijah. In his reflection of the song, Mr. Mark shares that he felt in his spirit that God replied to his prayer. He had been wondering where God was during the turmoil in Rwanda. And God replied by saying that indeed he was very much in control. The days we are living in are special times when he will require Christians to be filled with integrity and to stand up for him. Just in the way Elijah felt isolated and alone in the culture in which he lived, but God told him to stand up and to speak for him. I really, really enjoy this song and I encourage you to check it out. Do I stand up and do I speak for God when I face trials? Aside from my own trials, there is so much hurt in the world. In the midst of the darkness, just as the song Days of Elijah says, I want to be the voice in the desert declaring the word of the Lord. Thanks for listening.